It is Amaya, Marina, and Anna, and it has come to our attention a new term, eco-labeling. We have decided to learn a little bit about it, and we hope you find it interesting too. What would you choose? A cheaper product or the same product which is relatively more expensive, but is environment friendly. Do you check the possible environmental impacts of products you buy? Or do you just check the price? Eco-labeling is the process of giving products the title of environmentally friendly, meaning its production process and life cycle is not as wasteful and has minimum environmental repercussions. It is applicable to a wide spectrum of products. You can see cosmetics, clean products, clothes, textiles, food, anything you can think of. But the eco-labeling criteria are different for each product depending on its life cycle and each country. You might be asking yourself, who chooses this criteria? It is the Global Ecolabeling Network, a nonprofit organization in charge of the entire process, which is formed by members all around the world, including the European Union, who participates through the EU Ecolabel and establishes the necessary criteria for products made only in Europe to be certified as ecologically sustainable. These organizations also promote the circular economy, which is a production methodology that consists of manufacturing products in a way that companies can benefit from their own and others' waste, generating minimal waste and CO2 emissions. Where does the obsession with ecolabeling come from? Modern environmentalism was born in the late 19th century when concerns for people's health arose over pollution and gas emissions after the Industrial Revolution. The call for help has been more present over the past few decades, and governments and organizations have tried to encourage a new food production model. The saturation of the food production industry is having serious consequences of marine ecosystems and the already scarce natural resources that are regenerating at a slower rate than the when they are being extracted. Many companies have adapted to our planet's need and have changed the way they produce to a more ecological model. Consumers have also adapted and are increasingly more interested in consumer responsible. And this is where eco-labeling becomes attractive to brands, even when they are not really manufacturing in a less wasteful way. A second reason why we think eco-labeling is such a trend now is because of uh, social media and the beauty standard, a very unrealistic beauty standard it has forced upon society. The desire of having the perfect body has made us obsessed with our appearance and how to make it better, and this has resulted in people looking for the healthiest, most organic, most natural products because we associate ecological with healthier for our bodies. This has had a deep effect on the rise and sales of eco-friendly products. Many companies in Atman have been able to identify the search of ecological products. Some have decided to change their entire production processes and materials, while others have only put the bio stickers on their packaging, tricking people into thinking that they're purchasing eco-friendly products when they're really not. This is where law regulations come into play, to ensure the honesty of brands and avoid misinformation and protect customers. What's the association between ecological and healthy? Well, there are three types of agriculture. The traditional agriculture, that consists in the use of the typical system of the area, and it is characterized by having very little sanitation and a very reduced use of technology. The second one is industrial agriculture. It is extremely harmful to nature and it is based on large-scale production made in less time and space but with greater ecological damage. The main objective is to achieve higher levels of production and therefore more profit than the other types in trade. It also has a high degree of signification and capital investment. The last one is the ecological, biological or organic agriculture. Its objective is to obtain food of the highest quality possible, respecting the environment and conserving the fertility of the land through the optical use of natural resources. Moreover, there is an important difference between an organic and a conventional product. These are the chemicals that are added to the conventional product. These additives are added to food products in their production, preparation or packaging in order to make them safer and more durable. It is important to be reassured 
that in order to be able to use any chemical, strict rules and established limits must be followed. Are organic food products healthier than conventional ones? There have been plenty of scientific analysts that try to see if the meat that organic food is better than the conventional one is true. This analysis verify that there isn't a significant difference between these methods when we talk about the health of the product. What is greenwashing? We call greenwashing the process of conveying a false impression or providing misleading information about a company's products. Yes, for sure we know. It tricks consumers into believing that a company's products are environmentally friendly when the firm doesn't actually have any ecological consciousness. For example, companies involved in greenwashing behavior might make claims that their products are made from recycled materials or have energy-saving benefits, when they do not. Despite the fact that some of what they say might be partly true, they tend to exaggerate the benefits in order to convince consumers, which is their main purpose. The goal of companies who acquire greenwashing behavior is to take advantage of the growing demand for environmentally unsound products. Firms have been making an effort to improve their image through marketing strategies when they might not be having any commitment to green initiatives. Some of the most common strategies they use are playing with green colors that people immediately associate with nature and the use of words or fake logos that do not actually mean what people understand from them. Products are greenwashed through a process of renaming or repackaging, and they communicate the idea of being more natural, healthier, or free of chemicals than those offered by other brands in the competition. When could it be considered greenwashing? First of all, claiming that a product is totally green when in fact it just counts with a few sustainable characteristics, uh, being the rest of them harmful to the environment, just for the aim of selling more expensive. Secondly, warranting that a product is environmentally sustainable without any verification that proves it really is. Thirdly, use certain labels that are tricky enough and lead to misinterpretations regarding ecological benefits they don't really have, or including false information in the products. And fourth, offering consumers irrelevant information that confuses them and makes them be erroneous when it comes to making a green choice. This is actually a worryingly matter uh, since it can divert consumers' attention towards other elements that distract them from those that are dangerous. Fifth, applying unethical techniques such as green colors or images that suggest that a product is eco-friendly when in fact it has no real difference with those that don't have any green appearance. We can find greenwashing more commonly than we think, and there are many examples in the food industry, but the best by far is fast food that we consume habitually. Why do some firms decide to convert to greenwashing instead of going real green? Becoming a green company is not that easy as one can think, since a huge amount of time, investment and dedication is required, and companies sometimes rather spend their resources on marketing that sells them as green than they do on actually reducing environmental impact. Subway is the second largest fast food company in the world. In various commercial and ads, the company seems to be environmentally friendly. For example, a Subway commercial says, What if making the world a better place was as easy as getting a sandwich? Pointing out their positive effects on the environment. However, these statements appear to be quite questionable. Only 14 out of 22,000 establishments present in the US are eco stores, which means they use water efficient technologies, energy efficient innovations, and recycled materials. Although the company claims to have successfully cut carbon emissions, it would take only a few dozen stores to eliminate this progress and add perhaps three times as much pollution as it saves. Aside from the technologies they use, Subway has always tried to appear as a healthy and natural alternative to other fast food chains. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Jared Fugo was the face of Subway for many years because he claimed he had lost over 200 pounds by just eating two subs per day in two years. Since then, the brand slogan Eat Fresh has been their main tail point. But is it really fresh? A recent lawsuit has accused Subway of not using real tuna in their sandwiches. It is said to be a mixture of various concoctions that do not constitute actual tuna. 
Why would Subway do this? Because the manufacturing of this quote-unquote tuna is far less costly. Because of this, the company has also been accused of marketing misleading information. A similar controversy arose in Ireland when Sudwit was obligated to pay a value-added tax because their bread did not fit the criteria to be considered actual bread, a first necessity ingredient. It is actually considered an indulgence because it contains too much sugar. The belief of soups being healthy than other fast food products has been contradicted. McDonald's is another giant in the fast food industry, serving over 64,000 customers every day in over 33,000 restaurants in more than 100 countries. This huge production becomes the environment's first enemy. For example, every cheeseburger generates around 3 kilos of carbon dioxide, which leads to infinitive numbers considering the sandwich's huge production. McDonald's marketing decision consists of tooting its certified restaurants and align with Greenpeace to save the Amazon jungle. However, despite its commitment to the environment, it doesn't extend to telling us what contribution its activities make to climate change. Now we have the laws and regulations. Every product, in order to obtain the certificate of ecological products, they have to follow a number of specific rules. These rules were made to prevent other products from establishing themselves as eco when they are not. In the first place, products must be grown only with natural fertilizers and must not be genetically modified. However, natural fertilizers can be used as long as they are produced on their own premises. This is what we call biodynamic preparation. The biodynamic preparations are plants and animal substance with mineral additives in some cases, which are applied to food stuffs with the aim of affecting the growth dynamics of the plant. Moreover, the food must be cultivated on solid that has been previously approved from organic use. To prove that a product has the correct quality, the agriculture must go to organic farming committee. The aim of the organic label is to improve agricultural practices by promoting the environment and health conscious farming. This label indicates that a product complies with the regulation established by Europe. There are three principal laws that must be considered to establish a product as ecological. First, we have the regulation number 834 of the Council on organic production and labeling on organic products. Then we have the regulation number 884 of the commissions laying down detailed rules for the implementation of regulation number 834 as regards organic products, labeling and control. The last one is the regulation number 1235 of the commission laying down detailed rules for the implementation of regulation number 834 as regards imports of organic products from other countries. Furthermore, in 2021, they had incorporated a new one, the Regulation 848, that replaced Regulation 834. We conclude by defining what a true organic product is. A product is worthy of the eco label only when it hasn't been artificially manipulated either through pesticides, genetics, or added chemicals and ingredients. Contrary to popular belief, bioproducts are not necessarily healthier for our bodies. They have a similar nutritional value, they are just less processed. What they are is better for our planet. But if what you really want is to practice eco-friendly consuming, buy local and seasonal products.